We're talking all about how you can save money on your biggest bill in life, taxes, and the tax strategy necessary, and including how you can get the government to actually pay you for your investments. If you like this episode, I want you to give me a big thumbs up and subscribe so that you don't miss out on any of our tips. And please leave a comment, whether you have a question or if you want to provide your favorite tax strategy, I'd love to hear about it. Investing Secrets with Kevin Attried. Okay, so today we're continuing how the government is going to pay you to invest. Yes, continuing from last episode, we talked about a lot of different incentives and how the government is paying you for select investments. And today we're talking all about real estate. Real estate is one of my favorite asset classes on how the government incentivizes you to invest. And real estate not only provides tax incentives, reduces your taxable income, but it can also provide cash flow and often monthly passive cash flow. And there are four different methods by which you can reduce your taxes. The first is reducing taxes based on expenses. Investment real estate is a business and so you can deduct your expenses. You can deduct property taxes, insurance, property management, utilities, and a number of other different things. The list goes on and on. And you can also, hearkening back to a previous episode, you can reduce things uh, such as your home office or travel or education expenses when it's appropriate for your business purpose. In addition to business deductions on expenses, you also have depreciation. Depreciation is the cost of the wear and tear on your real estate. This allows you to create a loss for tax purposes while having positive cash flow. And there are four elements that make up the depreciation for your real estate investment. And those four are land, which has no depreciation, the building, which is depreciated between 20 and 40 years, land improvements, such as lighting and parking, which are depreciated between 10 and 20 years, as well as the contents of the building, such as the flooring, the cabinetry, the lighting, etc. And that's depreciated between five and 10 years. There's something called bonus depreciation. And bonus depreciation allows you to take depreciation for elements of your real estate that are less than 20 years, so that's the land improvement and the contents, that allows you to depreciate it in the first year when you have a cost segregation study or a cost seg. Otherwise, you'll depreciate based on land, 20% that has no depreciation, and the building at 80%. Stop letting the commercial banks take advantage of you. Use infinite banking to compound your savings at a much higher rate by connecting with the experts at Living Wealth. So let's walk through an example. If you were to purchase a million dollar piece of real estate, typically it would be depreciated at $20,000 per year. But if you use a cost segregation study, that first year depreciation can be as much as $312,500. So that allows you to create a tremendous loss in that first year to offset passive income losses. The next feature on real estate and how you can reduce your tax is called a like kind exchange, also called a 1031 exchange. And it allows you to defer all gains until the property is sold at some point in the future. Using this like kind exchange, it allows you to take the proceeds of the sale of one property or multiple properties and reinvest that into a new property or properties, therefore delaying the gains until the property is officially sold at some point in the future. And there is no limit to the number of exchanges that you can have on your investment property. And so it allows you to potentially continually 
delay gains until your death. And upon your death, there is a step up in basis of which your heirs actually get a readjustment of the market value so that there is no longer any gains. So the like kind exchange allows you to reinvest the proceeds from the sale of real estate so that the gains can be fueled and pumped into new property, therefore avoiding taxes until your death of which your heirs don't pay any taxes. It's awesome. You're likely paying way too much of your hard-earned dollars to the government. Reduce your largest expense in life by utilizing every tax-saving strategy with the experts at Smead CPA. And next is debt. Debt is a powerful instrument that allows you to ensure that you're also maximizing your tax benefits. For you see, debt is not taxed and the interest you pay on your tax is tax deductible. And debt is powerful because it allows a greater amount of investment stretching your dollar. That further compounds some of the other elements that we've talked about, especially depreciation. So debt and depreciation go hand in hand. And so when we look at the example, when you're looking at a $500,000 piece of real estate, debt allows you to purchase it for a down payment of $100,000 using 80% debt to value. And when you look at bonus depreciation, you could uh, receive up to 30% of that value in the very first year, that 30% being $150,000. So you can invest $100,000 in a piece of property and have a tax loss of $150,000. So those are the key elements of your ability to reduce your taxes. And in a future episode, we'll talk about how you can take those losses and actually use them to offset additional income. Real estate is so powerful, but you wanna make sure that you're doing this properly. So in our next episode, we're going to talk about how you can make sure that you're using these tactics to, the, to their maximum potential, as well as all the other features we've talked about in our previous episodes. And if you want all of these details in a specific guide so that you can reference for your strategy and implementing them year by year, then I want you to click the link below to download my free guide because I want you to experience financial freedom. The information contained in this episode are opinions not to be used as individual guidance. As always, consult your own financial team for your investment decisions.